In this video, I'm going to make a bold claim. Drammen is the best city for immigrants to Norway. While we go on a virtual city tour, you'll learn about Drammen's history, its influential figures and some of its unique ties to Britain. After that, I'll give you some local tips and we'll then compare Drammen to its neighbours to see if it really is the best commune for immigrants. Hi, jag heter Paminde och jag har flyttat till Norge i 2021. Snart ska jag lansera min egen bedrift som heter River Crane Studios. Om du är en lokal bedrift i Viken eller Oslo-området som har behov för video- eller fototjänster till en gunstig pris, så ta gärna kontakt via mail i beskrivelsen. Tillbaka till videon. If you're thinking about moving to Norway or you're a tourist looking to explore areas off the beaten path, I filmed a series of videos which aims to give you a better understanding of Norway's communer or municipalities. Today we're starting in Drammen. In many ways, Drammen's history has a lot in common with Britain's former industrial cities. They once had unsavory reputations, some of which still linger today. However, through extensive regeneration programs, they have recently become attractive places to live. We'll talk about the reasons why Drammen had a bad reputation soon. But let's dive straight into the first reason I believe Drammen is the best city for immigrants. Natural beauty. Having traveled extensively through southern, eastern and western Norway, I would say it's Norway's third prettiest city after Ålesund and Bergen. I also feel that Drammen represents other parts of Norway, but in miniature. Sitting at the end of Drammen's view is landscapes one would associate with western Norway, without the unpredictable weather. There are streets with cobbled roads and white wooden houses that resemble Stavanger's old town. Along the coast, there are wooden buildings that are just as old as those in Bergen's Bryggen, and near the center, there's a set of futuristic buildings that look like Oslo's Barkod project. The etymology of Drammen is uncertain. One theory is that it comes from Old Norse Drafen via Drofen, which means wave. An alternate theory is by Old Norse Draf, which means waste. Today, the city is nicknamed Elvebien, which means the river city. The town's motto is et godt sted å leve, or a good place to live, and those that live in the city are called Drammenser. The coat of arms was adopted relatively recently in 1960, but it's adapted from the Braga Ness city seal from 1723. The pillar and stones represent unity and a strong foundation. The sword represents strength and the key represents the city itself. The Latin words in fide et justitia fortitudo translate to in faith and justice lies strength. Drammen's history begins in the district of Austa, where there are rock carvings that are between 6,000 and 8,000 years old. They were engraved by Scandinavian hunter-gatherers at a time when the sea level was almost 60 meters higher. The carvings depict animals such as moose, whales and flatfish. Drammen is first attested in chapter 173 in the separate saga of Saint Olaf, written by the Icelandic historian Snorri Sturluson sometime around 1225. Historically, Drammen's most valuable resource has been its forests. During the Viking Age, timber was used in the production of salt and tar. Then, around the 1500s, three ports emerged along the river. On the north side was Braganes, named after Brakar Farm, which itself was named after Braki, or Juniper. On the south side were Tangen and Stemse, which is named after Strem Farm. The proximity of the ports to the forests, combined with the arrival of the water-powered sawmill, led to Drammen becoming the largest exporter of timber in the entire country. The Netherlands used Drammen's timber for shipbuilding and for construction in Amsterdam. While researching this video, I was surprised to discover that, after the Great Fire of London in 1666, it was timber from Drammen that helped rebuild the city. As demand grew, timber merchants began building their own ships, the first of which was built in 1671, named Maria. In 1716, during the Great Northern War, Charles XII of Sweden attempted to conquer Norway, entering from Herland in the south with the intention of taking the capital. The Norwegians decided to abandon Oslo and form a defensive line at Jellebek, while the government established themselves in Drammen. This meant that, for a few weeks, Drammen was the capital of Norway. In 1811, Braganes, Sremse and Tangen merged to become Drammen. One of Drammen's defining moments came in 1866, when the city was engulfed by a fire, leading to the loss of 388 houses and 5,000 individuals becoming homeless. Towards the end of the 1800s, the timber industry made way for the wood processing industry, which accounted for 95% of Drammen's exports in the early 1900s. In the interwar period, the industry began to decline and in the 1970s, the wood processing companies began closing down. It's during this decline that Drummond's bad reputation developed amongst the populace. Industrial waste from the factories and raw sewage were discharged directly into the river and there was a motorway that ran right through the city's public square, often creating traffic jams during major holidays. 
This aromatic cocktail of exhaust fumes, human excrement, and industrial pollutants inspire two phrases that are still commonly used today. Bedreme en drami timen en en time i dramen, which translates to better to have one shot an hour than one hour in dramen. The other is Norges Stashte Vikris, or Norway's largest crossroads. Thankfully, Drammen went through an extensive regeneration program with a series of initiatives beginning with the opening of Drammen's Brewer in 1975, which redirected traffic away from the centre of the city. In 1991, the Vaipake initiative led to a ring road, tunnel and motorway lane expansion to further ease congestion. In 1987, Kluwak or the Sewer Framework Plan, began at a time when 80% of the sewage that flowed into the river was untreated. This was resolved with a sewage system that cost 470 million kroner. Soon after, parks, piers and promenades were built along the riverside and the city made massive investments in public facilities, some of which will be featured later in the video. In 2008, Drammen received the award for Europe's best urban renewal by the European Council of Spatial Planners and it was also named the most successful region in terms of business development and attractiveness as a place to live. Famous people associated with Drammen include Peter Nikolai Arbo, a painter famous for depicting Norse mythology, Hans Heyerdahl, a realist painter who grew up in Drammen, Torbjörn Jagland, the 32nd Prime Minister of Norway, Martin Erdegård, the Arsenal footballer and captain of the Norwegian national team, and Hermann Termeros, an actor famous for the Norwegian shows Skam and Ragnarok. The next two reasons Drammen is the best city for immigrants are to do with the general population and immigrant population. Drammen has a population of 103,291, spread across 318 square kilometers, making it the seventh most populous commune in the country. It's a fast-growing city, experiencing 1.5% population growth on an annual basis. What this means for you is that there is enough tax revenue for investment, development and local events throughout the year. The third reason is the immigrant population, with 30.26% of Drammen's population coming from an immigrant background, ranking seventh in the country. Having spent a lot of time in a small village near Orlesund and Sashborg, it's liberating to be able to walk around without getting stared at. Having a sizable population means I can buy Indian spices or visit a temple for a religious event. The next two reasons are regarding its geography. Draman is 35 kilometers southwest of Oslo, which translates to a commute time of just 36 minutes by train or 45 minutes by car. For frequent travelers, it takes about one hour, 10 minutes to reach Oslo airport. In 2009, Eir analyzed 50 years of summer temperatures from all over Norway and discovered that Drammen is Norway's warmest city and the second warmest commune, coming second only to Nes. In fact, in 2021, Drammen set a new record for Norway's highest temperature in September at 28.6 degrees Celsius. Around the city, you'll find many place names featuring Øy, meaning island. For example, Strømse, Brakroya, and Landfall Øye. This is because they were originally islands. We begin the tour ascending Spiralen, a spiral tunnel that turns six and a half times on itself. The 1650 meter long tunnel was designed by engineer Ivan Olsen and was opened by King Olaf V in 1961. On the way up, look out for the reflective footprints on the wall and the troll family wrapped up in hemp rope, representing the shape of the tunnel. In 2016, CNN Travel listed Spiralen as the world's sixth greatest tunnel and in 2021, it was upgraded with colored lighting which marks every floor. The tunnel is open from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. and parking costs 42 kroner. The peak, 213 meters above sea level, is called Spiraltoppen and offers a remarkable view that stretches from Drammensfjorn to Mjørndalen and beyond. There is also an open-air museum, a cafe and several hiking routes in Drammensmarka, the forest north of Drammen. The most popular route is to Landfall Shan, a public bathing spot. Head back down to the city centre to Tamsgate Pehus, which costs 31 krona per hour, but is free after 4 p.m. on weekdays and 12 p.m. on Saturdays. Braganeskirke is a neo-Gothic church designed by architect Ernst Nordgren that can seat 1150 individuals. The altarpiece, The Resurrection, was painted by Adolf Tiedemann, one of Norway's most popular artists from the National Romantic period. Braganes Torg, at 210 meters long and 60 meters wide, is the largest public square in Norway and one of the largest in Scandinavia. It was deliberately designed to prevent future fires from spreading from one side of the city to the other. In 2005, Braganes Torg was voted Norway's best outdoor space and in 2018 the south side was renovated. Drammen has a history of embracing electricity-powered public transport, including launching Scandinavia's first electric trolley bus in 1909. In 1972, Drammen launched the Tuff Betorge electric train, which to this day still runs from Thursdays to Saturdays during the summer. 
In 2021, Draman launched a self-driving bus that connects the public square to Sese Draman, a shopping center. In the center of the square is Sant Halvash Bran, a fountain that was built in 1952 by Ernulf Bast, one of Norway's most famous 20th century sculptors. Around the edges of the fountain are 12 reliefs which depict daily life in Draman. The fountain itself is dedicated to Halvard Verbjörnsen, who was born at Husby Farm in Lier, the son of Verbjörn, a farmer, and Turni, who was related to Saint Olav. In 1043, Halvar was about to cross Dramansfjord when a pregnant female slave ran up to him and asked to be rowed across. She was pursued by three men who accused her of stealing, for which the penalty was death. She strenuously denied the charge and Halvard believed her, so he began rowing her across. One of the men fired arrows towards the boat, one of which struck Halvar, killing him. The men then beat the woman to death and tied a stone to Halvar, attempting to sink his body. After the men left, his body floated back up and the locals buried him. However, miracles were observed at his grave and he became a saint. His memorial day is on May the 15th, the day he died. Sant Halvar is often depicted with a millstone in one hand and three arrows in the other, signifying the three deaths that occurred, his own, the woman, and her unborn child. The original Draman Bursch, or commodity exchange, burned down in the 1866 fire. The new building was designed by Swedish architect Emil Victor Langlet and opened partially unfinished in 1871. He is famous in Norway for being the architect of Norway's parliament building. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone and in 1877, unbelievably, demonstrated the telephone for the first time in Norway right here in this building. Several in attendance were skeptical of the device, with local politician Jakob Bork remarking, Ja, mine herre, det er et meget morsomt leketøy. Men noen praktisk betydning for det aldri which translates to, yes, gentlemen, it is a very funny toy, but it will never have any practical significance. This next area, Gamle Kirkeplass, was Draman's original public square before the fire. Draman's theater was also designed by the Swedish architect Emil Victor Langlet. It originally opened in 1870, burned down in 1993, and was reopened by King Harold V in 1997. On the 22nd of July, 2011, 77 people were killed in an attack by a right-wing terrorist. 53 communes have statues of remembrance for the victims, which were created by artist Nico Wiederberg. In most countries, with the passage of time, the number of victims becomes a statistic. However, Norway's small population means that one in four people know someone affected by the attack, including myself. My wife was meant to be at Utøya, and two people she knew were murdered that day. Draman Park, covering an area of 41,210 square meters, is the city's main park, offering a variety of sports facilities for basketball, football, and skating. The fountain in the center was built in 1986 to celebrate Draman's 175th birthday. Just to the west of the fountain is a small memorial stone called Minnesmarke over Bibran, which marks exactly where the 1866 fire started. To the north of the park is the Engelske Quartale, or the English Quarter. It was designed by Bjarne Tin Sivatsen, based on the Hageby or English Garden City urban planning movement. Ypsilon Bridge, named after the Greek letter, is a futuristic bridge that connects Papir Bredden and Draman Park. It's 137 meters long with masts that are 47 meters high. It opened in 2008 and was awarded the European Steel Bridges Award the same year, followed by the Norwegian Steel Construction Award in 2009. Built on the remnants of a paper factory, Papir Bredden is a knowledge park that contains Drummond's public library, the county library, and a campus for the University of Southeast Norway. It opened in 2007 with accessibility and sustainability in mind, covering an area of 21,000 square meters across seven floors. In 2007, it received the Norwegian Steel Construction Award and the European Steel Design Award. On either side of the bridge is Elveharp. The sound sculpture, taking the form of two spheres, was designed by Paul Xu Wang and Louise Battleson and installed in 2008. The sculpture generates ethereal musical tones by interpreting the wirelessly transmitted oscillations of the bridge. Arvebastua is a floating wood-burning sauna with an outdoor shower. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use it, but I'm sure it's something my 12 or so Finnish viewers will be interested in. Aktivitetstake is a free-to-use playground that offers tennis, table tennis, basketball, chess, and shuffleboard facilities. You can reserve the tennis court in advance with the app Machi. Union Scene is a venue for events and concerts that has been open since 2005. 
Just outside is one of my favorite sculptures in Draman, a Lego man carving himself out of granite. Grenland Torg is a picturesque square with restaurants, luxury apartments and a few sculptures. The architecture in the area is amongst some of the most unique in Draman. New Connections is a collaboration between the Komune, Buskuru Art Centre and 18 street artists. In 2023, Draman put out a call for artists to have their work featured on two walls 55 metres long and 1.8 metres high. Over 50 applications were submitted and 16 were selected, alongside two artists who were invited to take part in the project. My favourite is the Star Wars themed piece by Ronnie Bank. We're about halfway through the video now. Have you subscribed? Why not subscribe right now? It'll make my day. Stremse Torg was originally called Janbane Torge, but changed its name in 1947. The square is with the Globus Festival and is held in September, which is named after the yellow elliptical building south of the square. Notable features include Draman Station, designed by architect Georg Andreas Bull. It opened in 1866 with two floors. A third floor was added in 1926 and a new building was added in 1977. It was recently renovated in 2011 and is currently undergoing extensive building works in relation to line upgrades. Die Tre B a 1952 statue of three women representing the three parts of Draman. Bragenes, Sremsa and Tangen. Nackel or Svard. A column near the station with Draman's city seal on the top. Sadly, it was removed in 2023, presumably because nobody knew it existed. Water Pavilion, a water sculpture by English artist William Pye, created for the city's 200th anniversary in 2011. Near the square is a sculpture dedicated to the visionary political activist Markus Trane, who founded Norway's very first workers' association here in Drammen in 1848. Soon after, the Trane movement had over 30,000 members, which was almost the number of people who voted in the 1850 election. This political power, combined with his revolutionary ideas, such as improvements to workers' rights, public schools and universal suffrage, led to his imprisonment for several years by the authorities. Today, over 2 million Norwegians belong to a trade union, enjoying some of the best wages, worker benefits and protections in the world. Drammen's museum was founded in 1908 on the Marine List Pleasure Farm. It has a selection of artefacts, both the ornate and the unusual, from Drammen's heyday. There are also a handful of historic buildings outside, some of which have small exhibitions. In the summer, there's a gardening festival which is a fun way to spend an afternoon. Just south of Björnstane Björnsens Gate, the main road running through Drammen is Marine List, a farm that became a sports and recreation area in 1947. There are several free-to-use facilities including an athletics track, football pitch, volleyball courts and a park. Drammen's Hallen was once the Nordic region's largest sports hall with an area of 7,500 square meters. Today, it's used primarily for handball, athletics and social events. Artists that have played there include Queen, U2 and Bon Jovi. Nearby is Drammen's Bade. It opened in 2008 with nine pools. However, since it costs an eye-watering 190 crowns for adult admission, I haven't visited it yet, nor do I plan to. The original Marine List Stadion was built in 1924 and today has a capacity of 8,935. It's the home ground for Stam Skotse Top Football, who play in Elite this area, Norway's top flight football league. Notably, they last won the league in 2013. There are a couple of interesting initiatives at Knutepunkt Stamsa. If you're short on gardening space, Stamsa Hagen is a community garden that offers you a space to grow produce. The Kommune will even lend pallets for your use if you send them an email in advance. Near the middle of Stemsahagen is Skinja, a sculpture named after the Old Norse word for perceive. The modern Norwegian descendant word is Schöne, which means understand. It displays the air quality using 9,000 LEDs on 30 aluminium columns. The presence of purple indicates reduced air quality. If you walk along the coast, you'll come across a 174 meter long jetty that was built in 1979, named after the influential Yildenlöwe or Golden Lion family. The parallel road to the south features some of Draman's oldest buildings, reminiscent of those in Bergen. Draman's Brewer originally opened in 1975, easing the aforementioned city congestion that flowed through the public square. At 1,892 meters long, Draman's Brewer is Norway's longest bridge. In 2007, it was widened to four lanes, which was marked with the development of an urban park and several sculptures in the vicinity. Brupartkin is a 12,000 square meter park under the bridge that forms a rainproof activity area, which includes a skate park, a rink, climbing walls and a fountain. 
It was voted Norway's best outdoor space in 2008 by the Norwegian Municipal Technical Association. Tadmisk Tids project consists of a 1,700 meter long aluminium pipe that runs alongside the bridge, which expands and contracts throughout the day. These movements drive a diamond grinder, which in turn carves the edges of a 2.5 meter diameter granite wheel. At opposite sides of the bridge are Herd and Herd 2. Upon the two columns are 1.8 meter bronze sculptures of men with guitar cases on their back. Let's make our way back over the bridge. Holman Nocken was once a small public park where the midsummer celebrations were held. It's currently being used in connection with the construction of the new city bridge. One of my favorite parts of Drammen is Fjordparken, a tranquil coastal park that stretches from Holmenbrua to Drammensfjord. It's an idyllic getaway full of wildlife as well as outdoor equipment for those into bodyweight training. Just after the bridge is Bragernes Strand, one of the city's best places for an evening stroll, full of points of interest and sculptures. Horst Bryggeri, founded in 1834, is Norway's oldest brewery in continuous operation, with a fifth generation Horst family member still in charge. For 495 kroner, you can go on a two and a half hour tour with a beer tasting. If you head around to the north side, there's a sensual piece of art commissioned by the brewery, which is based on a photo of Tarja Ors from 1983. Near the square, there's a suspiciously named company and a couple of upscale restaurants which I've never visited, but perhaps some locals can chime in as to whether they are good or not. Drammen's most visible construction project is the third iteration of the Bibrua, or City Bridge, which links Braga Nestorg and Strømsetorg. The first iteration, which featured a drawbridge, was in operation from 1813 to 1936. The second iteration was from 1936 to 2022, which formed an iconic part of the National Day celebrations. The third iteration is scheduled to be open in autumn 2025, but sadly will not feature a drawbridge. For now, there's a temporary footbridge allowing pedestrian traffic between the two squares. The second notable construction project is a new 122,000 square meter hospital that will open in 2025. It's estimated to cost 14 billion kroner. The Turkish store Elite Demath is what is colloquially known as an inbound boutique or immigrant shop. It has a good reputation and is very popular with immigrants, so don't expect any respect for your personal space. For East Asian products, I recommend the small chain Ham, which has stores in Drammen, Sandvika and Moss. Like other countries, Norway has seen a remarkable decline in the traditional high street as consumers increasingly shop online or at retail parks. Drammen only has a selection of small retail parks, so instead head to the neighbouring towns of Mjøndan and Lier for more alternatives. Towards Mjøndan, there's Price Lager Boutique, which is similar to Holbart in Norway or B&M in the UK. Although they do offer groceries, they also sell heavily discounted household essentials and food that is near the end of its shelf life, but still good to eat. It's one of my favourite places to stock up on snacks before a road trip. If you're into gardening, Plantation is the largest chain in Norway, with 73 garden centres across the country. However, I highly recommend the Indian-owned Lier Plantelan as an affordable alternative. It was established in 2009, covers an area of 10,000 square metres and receives over 50,000 visitors annually. What makes them unique is that they grow their own plants on site, passing their savings on to you. Kapadokya, or Kappa as my in-laws call it, is a popular restaurant offering Turkish cuisine from different parts of the country at affordable prices. Over the years, I have noticed that the quality varies depending on the chef and how busy it is, but the portions are always generous. Dario is a cafe that sells homemade Italian gelato, sorbet and pasta. They offer a range of traditional gelato flavours as well as creative seasonal flavours. Korka is a small chain offering some of the best baked goods in Norway. They are famous for their large, filling donuts and a variety of delectable flavours, but I just have to give a special mention to their cream cheese cinnamon buns. Korka are highly sought after on the app Too Good To Go, often selling out within 10 seconds. Persevere though and you'll be rewarded with a selection of donuts that will blow your mind. Bax Tube is a chain bakery with a good reputation. Wait until the last 30 minutes before closing and everything is 50% off. Soft serve ice cream originally came to Norway in the 50s and arguably reached its peak at Best Lied, where they serve outrageously large 200 gram portions in three flavours, regular, strawberry and chocolate. They sell 20,000 kilograms of ice cream every year, making them the third largest customer of Tine's ice cream brand Diplomis. During the summer, queues are long and outdoor seating is hard to find, so a good tip is to assign a lookout person while you wait. If it's your first time trying Norwegian soft serve, make sure you ask for Nette Krukan, which are candied hazelnuts. Gullskogen Gård is a fantastic place to have a family picnic. 
It was once a farm called Sandreskogen that was purchased at auction by Peter Nikolai Arbo, a wealthy timber merchant. He turned it into a pleasure garden in 1804. It later became the home for his relatives, including the other Peter Nikolai Arbo, one of Norway's most well-known artists who was raised here. The main building was designed in the neoclassical style, while the French Baroque garden is today considered to be one of the best preserved old gardens in Norway. Kids will love getting close to the free-roaming peacocks. Chesteru Juve is Drammen's most iconic hike, a dramatic 1,300 meter walk through a 10,000 year old gorge with a total ascent of 250 meters. You should be aware that there are some moderately dangerous sections that involve the use of worn out ladders and the trees do fall into the gorge. As such, do not attempt it after heavy rain or in otherwise adverse conditions. The hike takes around 90 minutes each way and culminates in a pond called Gamledaman. For those new to hiking, there's a picturesque walk along the coast at Engeshan Strand, which is just outside Drammen. Since the cleanup of the river, Drammen's Elva has returned to being one of Norway's best salmon fishing rivers, as well as hosting 41 other species of fish. Further afield, there's a long fishing pier in Holmestrand, which is very popular and best of all, free. The best cinema in Drammen is NF Shino. Actually, it's the only cinema in Drammen. Thankfully, the NF doesn't stand for the National Front, but instead Nordisk Film, a Danish entertainment company. The cinema opened in 2001 with 925 seats and six screens named after different cinemas. In the years preceding the pandemic, the cinema received 360,000 visitors annually, making it the fifth busiest cinema in Norway. Be aware that the screen capacities vary dramatically. Screen 1 is the largest, whereas screen 6 has just four rows. Ten-pin bowling arrived in Norway in 1960 and became a popular family activity during the 90s. Bovling N is a chain that opened their Drammen branch in 2000. They have 20 bowling lanes and offer a variety of packages, including unlimited bowling for 239 kroner. In June, there's Kulturnat, an open night of culture across the whole city with dozens of events and live music. In August, there's Elve Festival, which began in 1995 to celebrate that the river had finally become clean. In the past, it has attracted high-profile international artists such as MIA, Roxette, Anastasia, Status Quo and Joe Cocker. In September, there's Globus Festival, a food and culture festival, and in October, there's uh, Oktoberfest. One of the litmus tests for calling oneself a Drammenser is knowing the location of a small road called Pelzeswingen, or the Sausage Swing. If you want to impress a local, you can tell them it's named so because of its sausage-like shape. Furthermore, there's an organization called Drammen Pelzeforening, which is campaigning for a sausage sculpture in the vicinity of the road. As autumn approaches, you might notice an airy glow that lights up the sky towards the north. It means that Drammen's Haustblot is underway. Those who fail the Norwegian social studies exam after three attempts are ritually sacrificed to appease Freyr, the Norse god of fertility, fair weather and a good harvest. So uh, do your homework. Let's see how Drammen stacks up against Norway's 355 other kommuner. You can look forward to earning an annual wage of 612,120 kroner, the 34th highest in the country. Like other countries, house prices have grown significantly in the last 20 years. These prices are from 2022 and have increased since then, but the rankings should still be accurate. Draman's house prices are relatively affordable compared to Oslo, costing about half the price on a square meter basis. NHO, Norway's largest employers organization, ranks Draman 56th in the country, taking into account business life, labor market, demography, competence and economy as factors. The level of higher education is an area for improvement, with Draman ranking lower than the surrounding kommuner, but higher than the average. Reported crime is higher than Norway's average in surrounding Kommune, but not as high as other cities such as London or Oslo. I don't know what's happening in Laerdal, but they can learn from Utsira, which reported no crimes at all. The Progress Party, the Norway First, climate change denying party that wants to put a complete stop to non-Western immigration is slightly stronger in Drammen than average. What areas does Drammen need to work on? There are a few. The most obvious is that the regeneration process is still underway, so there are residential areas that could use some investment. The level of crime and higher education are areas for improvement compared to Drammen's neighbours. In 2023, after a period of extended rainfall, there was flooding along the river. Upstream, in Hoxen, the flooding was significant enough to warrant evacuations. There are sometimes problems or maintenance work on the train line, meaning passengers have to take the dreaded bus for Torg, or train replacement bus. Lastly, I should mention that the seagulls are particularly vicious in Drammen. They will try to poop on you, dive bomb you and steal your food, so be vigilant. In summary, Drammen offers natural beauty, a large cosmopolitan population, a short commute to Oslo, some of Norway's warmest weather, good wages and reasonable, for the time being, house prices. I would say Drammen is particularly suited to commuters who are used to the suburban or city life. So, instead of the out-of-date expression, Vedreme en Drammen i Timen, en in Timen i Drammen, why not come to Drammen, have a look at the sites for yourself and enjoy a Drammen in the Nordic region's largest public square. 
after all. En tur i drammen är bättre med en dram samman. Thank you for watching this video. If you're local, let me know your favorite facts or tips in the comments. If you're not from Drammen, is your commune better than Drammen? Let me know why and perhaps I'll feature it in a future video. If you really enjoyed the video and have the means, you can help me fund future projects and hopefully even make a living by becoming a member of the channel or donating to my Patreon. Channel members can look forward to early access to new videos, outtakes, a look behind the scenes, extended editions of videos and more. You can find out more by clicking the join button below. And if not, that's totally fine. You can also help me out by clicking like, subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell. That lets YouTube know you really enjoyed my video and in return gives me a boost in the rankings. While you're here, don't forget to browse my channel for other videos about Norway's history and culture. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.